Hello everyone, uh, this video is part of a series of videos that I'll be making on some intermediate and advanced concepts of SAP Cloud Application Programming Model. Uh, so if you're new to SAP CAP model, uh, please go through my previous beginner videos or other online resources including SAP CAP documentation. Uh, so in this video, we'll be looking at emitting events and handling events. Uh, so let me quickly move to the next branch, uh, git checkout 8. So a uh, couple of things that I want to show is um, the services that we have seen so far. Uh, we saw that uh, a service we were able to handle events. Uh, so the uh, create update, we saw how we can handle the events. Uh, but the service can also emit events. Uh, so in addition to handling events, uh, the service can also emit events as well. Uh, so here in my uh, demo service.js file, if you look uh, in this branch, in this eight branch, uh, I've commented out the code for the background process. Uh, actually, I didn't have to return true. So the background process doesn't have to return true or false. It's always ignored. Uh, but uh, here I'm, I've commented out this code and I'm emitting an event here. Uh, so this is how the service would emit an event. And this is the name of the event that I'm emitting. And along with the event, I'm also emitting some data that is a part of this event. Uh, so the service can also emit this event. And this event that is being emitted uh, can be handled by our application. And we can have multiple event handlers for this event here. Uh, so here I'm handling this event. This is my first listener. Uh, so I have this call, but I have this function here uh, that says first listener and then another method that says second listener. So this mes uh, method can be completely different. Uh, but here all I'm changing is the, the string, the console.log string. Uh, let me see if my CDS batch is running. So my CDS batch is running. Uh, so every five seconds you can see that uh, there is this uh, message that is being output to the screen. Uh, uh, so you have the first listener and then the second listener. And this is how you would uh, emit an event and also handle this event uh, within this uh, process. Uh, so if we look at this uh, structure right here, uh, so this is the same process and the same service. So uh, this is the demo service that is running within the same process. Uh, so the service is emitting this event and we are handling it and there are multiple handlers. Now this is something that Node.js can handle. Uh, so SAP CAP framework just provides the plumbing. So this is not such a big deal uh, because we are doing everything within the same process and within the same service. Uh, but I'm just illustrating how we can handle the events and how we can emit events uh, and uh, so let's uh, move to the next branch. So in the next branch, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it a little bit. Uh, so git checkout nine. So here in this uh, branch, in branch nine, uh, I've removed uh, the background task. So it's no longer emitting it in the background task. And this is just to show that the emitting the event doesn't have to be part of a background task. It can be part of any other event as well. So I've moved that line of code uh, into right here, into the read of employees. So whenever the employees, whenever you do a read of the employees, uh, it emits, uh, now the name of the event is different demo event. And then this is the message associated with this event. And this happens when you read the employees. Uh, now, here, uh, I've also changed it a little bit. Uh, so in this case, um, I'm using the same process, uh, but I also created a different service. Um, so if I go into my uh, file explorer, you can see that now I have a demo service and I also have another service.js here as well. Uh, so here I'm actually listening to this event from a different, completely different service. Although this service also runs within the same process. And let's see uh, how this works. Uh, so here I'm able to connect to this remote service. Uh, so this is the uh, syntax to connect to the remote service. So I, from this completely new service, I'm connecting to the uh, 
demo service. Uh, so, and with that, I'm able to handle this event from a completely different service. Uh, so slightly different here. So same process, a different service. Uh, so service A, uh, which is the demo service right here, uh, it uh, emits the event and we are handling the event here as well. So here, uh, there is the demo event and I'm handling demo event right here. Uh, but in addition to this, uh, there is also a completely different service that I've created. Uh, this service really doesn't have anything. It's just a, a, a brand new service. And this is also able to can uh, handle this event. So if I go, my CTS watch should still be running. Uh, and you can see that uh, it is uh, connected like if I make a request to employees uh, because uh, I've set it up so that it uh, uh, runs when I send a request, uh, you can see that the first listener uh, was able to handle this event and then the second listener from a completely different service uh, that was also able to handle this event. Uh, so uh, what you have to do is uh, in this another service you need to connect to this remote service uh, using cds.connect2 and then the demo service and now you're able to listen to this and handle this event even though it is happening in a different service. Okay again this is something a little bit more complex than the previous one uh, but nothing significant. Uh, this is something that you can still handle within Node.js. Uh, SAP CAP framework uh, gives you all the plumbing, uh, but it's not something too complex. Uh, so we, uh, so uh, let's uh, go to the next step uh, where we can do it uh, in a much more complex way. So here, the next step in the progression is I want to do it in a completely different process and then a different service. Um, so process A, so there is a service A in, inside process A, uh, which is emitting an event and it's also able to handle the event. And then I also have a completely different process. So which means it's a completely different application altogether. So I have a completely different application altogether. And this one has a, a service and it's able to handle the event that was emitted by this service, uh, which is running in a completely different process. Uh, so let's see how we can do this. Uh, for this to happen, uh, we need some kind of a broker. Uh, so this uh, application A, uh, which has the service A, uh, this talks to this uh, broker right here. Um, and service B, uh, which doesn't know, uh, and service A doesn't even know who the uh, who the recipients are. It just talks to this broker right here. And service B, which is running in a completely different process or an application, uh, is able to talk to this uh, broker and handle the uh, events. Now this leads to event-driven architecture applications. Um, so let's quickly have a look at how we can accomplish this. Uh, so there are a couple of ways uh, how the SAP CAP framework supports this. Uh, so as far as the broker is concerned, uh, the CAP framework supports two different uh, uh, messaging systems. Uh, if you're just doing some development, uh, then you can use the file-based messaging system. And this is a, a simpler way of uh, doing development, making sure everything is working. And then if you want to go and do some production-based event-driven architecture, uh, then you can do this enterprise messaging. Uh, this is a service in the SAP BTP platform, and this provides uh, reliability, scalability, and so on. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So here, uh, I'm going back to my branch right here. Let me stop this for a while. So I'm stopping my CDS uh, watch. Uh, I'm going to go to the next branch right here, get checkout 10. And let's see what has changed. Uh, so here you see all these files are now no longer valid. So I'll show you what we have done. Uh, so because we want two applications, uh, so here in this case, we are looking at uh, process A and process B. So we really need two applications. So what I've done is uh, this entire application that we've been working on so far, I've moved it into a folder. I created a folder called old process and I moved all the values, all the files, uh, moved the application files inside this folder. Uh, so the old process is going to be my application one or process A. 
and then I created a brand new application uh, in a folder called new process and uh, this is a brand new application and all this does is it listens to this event that is uh, emitted by this old process uh, so we'll, let's quickly look at the files here uh, so here I have two folders old process if I go into my old process it's all this familiar files that we've already seen uh, so we have demo JS uh, so here I'm reading employees and I'm emitting this event demo event along with this uh, message payload and I'm also handling it within this uh, uh, service itself so here I have uh, the service that is handling this event uh, here uh, and then I created this brand new application right here uh, new process and new process really doesn't have much except uh, what it does is um, it's connecting to this uh, demo service and it's uh, listening to this uh, process uh, this event that is being handled uh, that is being emitted okay so what are the changes that we need to make this happen uh, so in my old application uh, there is a couple of changes I have to make uh, one is I go into this package.json file uh, so here in my package.json file in my old application uh, so I have to add this section uh, so basically we are using file based messaging uh, so like I said for development purpose we can use file based messaging and that's what I'm using right here so in my uh, app uh, in my package.json I've added support for file based messaging right here uh, and then um, in my new application uh, also I have added support for file based messaging right here uh, so this is a, a simple basic uh, cap application uh, but I've added support for file based messaging also in the new application and in the new application you can also see uh, that I'm connecting that I have this demo service and I'm pointing to this old demo service uh, application old process okay so once we do this uh, so in my new application if I go into my uh, service.js uh, I can use this syntax to connect to this uh, demo service and then listen to this event right here and let's see how this all works out uh, so here I can run CDS watch uh, but then my old application has now moved into this old process folder so I'm going to say CDS watch slash old process and uh, this is uh, going to run uh, the CDS watch from my old application uh, so when I run this uh, CDS watch from my old application uh, a couple of things I do want to show uh, is that oops uh, let me go into CDS uh, CD old process and then run CDS watch uh, so here it should uh, uh, run the application uh, in port 4004 uh, so it's going to take the uh, 4004 as the default uh, port and it's running on port 4004 now if you look uh, there is also one other thing that it has done it says connect to messaging uh, so because we have a require statement in the CDS uh, section uh, you have this uh, CDS message dot box uh, so right now there is one uh, event I think this is from my previous run uh, but uh, so there is an event that's already there but uh, uh, you see that uh, it has this uh, file based messaging right here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this uh, other terminal right here and here I'm going to move to the new process uh, and then I'm going to run CDS watch now since uh, port 4004 is already taken and this is a completely different application uh, it will choose a random port uh, but just so that I want I want to sh uh, emphasize that it's running in a different port uh, so I'm going to specify the port myself uh, so you don't have to specify it uh, you can let it run on a random port uh, but here I want to completely illustrate that it's running in a different port so it's 4005 uh, and this application also uh, is going to connect to this uh, uh, this messaging right here CDS uh, messaging and because uh, 
this message was right there it's able to consume it already you can see that it consumed that message and this message actually went away uh, because uh, this was able to consume that message now let's uh, quickly see how this uh, whole thing works uh, so if i go into my request uh, where's my request.http so if i go into my request and if i do a request on the employees uh, so there is going to be a message uh, that is going to be emitted and it's going to that broker and then the new process is able to, even though it's a completely different application, uh, it's able to consume that message. And here in my old application or the application that emitted this event, uh, here also I can uh, get this, uh, I can also handle this event here as well. So it's, uh, it's being handled in both places. Now one thing I can also do is uh, I can stop this uh, new application. So this new application I've stopped. Uh, so this new application is no longer able to uh, consume the messages. Uh, but let me go ahead and run this a few times. One, two, three, four, five. So I've run this a few times here. Uh, but the new application, since it's stopped, it's no longer able to consume these messages. And if I go into this uh, message broker itself, if I open this message broker, you will see if quite a few uh, events that are queued up in this uh, uh, broker. Now, if I go into my new application, my process application and if I start this application uh, CDS watch uh, port 4005 now when this uh, comes up uh, it will be able to consume these events so if you look carefully uh, it's going to consume these events and all these events is, are going to disappear from this uh, broker so all these events have disappeared and you can see that it has consumed all these events uh, so yeah so this is uh, how the event-driven architecture works. Again, we for development purpose, we use the file-based messaging, uh, which is uh, only for development purpose. Uh, if you're going to do anything production, then you would want to use the enterprise messaging. Uh, that is a service in SAP BTP. Uh, so this uh, provides for more reliability and scalability as well. Okay, uh, see you in the next uh, session.